Hello, I'm Adam and this is Gosu Coders. Today we're checking out the Cloud9 IDE by Amazon Web Services. Let's get started. Alright, with any project I like to set some goals that I have for the research. I came up with four that I think are very important here. The first one that matters to me a lot is how expensive is it? I can download VS Code, for example, for complete free, completely free, and I really want something that isn't going to cost a lot of money if I'm going to use Cloud9. Secondly, what language does, does it support? I really care a lot about Java and JavaScript. It would be really cool if I could do some C++ stuff there, but I'm not really expecting that going into it. The third thing that I want to uh, find out about is whether or not, like, this thing has features that I can't get on like VS Code, Visual Studio, maybe IntelliJ, some of the IDEs that I use today. And the fourth and final thing I want to talk about, it's like, can I do some real world development with it? For example, can I set up a Sales.js application, which is a Node.js based framework that I do recommend you checking out? Can I preview the web page within the browser? And can I debug? the JavaScript from that framework. So those are the goals I set out to accomplish. I start by digging into the Cloud9 documentation a little bit because I need to find out how expensive it is. So it turns out during setup that you actually need to launch an EC2 instance, which is basically a small server that Amazon's gonna run for you. There are a couple of concerns I had about that because they can get expensive. I ended up choosing a T3 small instance, which has a two cents per running hour cost to it. So it's actually not too bad. So in a single eight hour day, if you're coding that entire time, you're gonna be looking at about 16 cents. Now that can add up if your server doesn't stop at a certain point, right? So what if you launch that server and it's running 24 hours uh, nonstop? Then that cost ends up getting to be a little bit more, you know, closer to 50 cents a day, which by the end of the month is $15 a month. That's, you know, that's not a lot of money, but that's significant. The cool thing that Cloud9 has built into it is you can actually set your instance to stop if it becomes inactive for 30 minutes or so. Actually, you can set that time to pretty much anything you want. I think the minimum was 30 minutes, but I can't remember that for sure. And I wanted to test that out, so I did, and that worked beautifully. I mean, ideally, if you're doing a side project, you're going to be spending less than probably a dollar a month to launch Cloud9, do some coding, test some stuff out, and then uh, the EC2 instance is shut off, and then you come back. It does not replace, it does not replace GitHub or Git, rather, as a source control mechanism. It is really a cool place for you to be able to work from anywhere that you are. Like, you could be at a hotel in a different state, still log into your environment you set up. All right, the next thing that I wanted to do was dig into what languages Cloud9 supports. And out the gate, there were quite a few, like there, there are a lot of options. And I wanted to see which ones actually support debugging. So I start with my favorite language. And if you know me at all, you know that uh, JavaScript's my favorite language. I build a very simple application that just prints out the number in a loop, right? And I want to set a breakpoint in there just to see how de debugging actually works. And it works beautifully. Like it, it breaks correctly and everything works flawlessly. Over on the right side, you can see some of the features that you get. You have watch expressions, you have a call stack, you have uh, local variables, everything that I would absolutely expect that in a debugger to have. And that works great. So JavaScript is a check, like that is great. Next, I move over to my second most used language today which is Java. I build basically the same application, monkey around with it. I have to put the main function in there. I get it to run, it runs flawlessly. It prints out everything to the console like I would expect. But when I set a breakpoint, nothing happens. And I'm like, all right, what am I doing wrong here? So I start digging into it and I find some documentation that only mentions a few languages that actually support debugging. And unfortunately, Java is not one of them. So. I can't really use this for a lot of the Java applications I would want to use until debugging is implemented and maybe it never will be, I have no idea. So finally, I did see that C++ does support debugging, so I wanted to try that out. I set up a C++ file, very simple, right? I just include IO stream, 
do the same thing. I do a loop and I just uh, see out a couple uh, lines, you know, with maybe hello world and a few um, integer values. And I set a breakpoint and again, nothing happens. So I, I'm getting a little bit concerned that, you know, maybe C++ debugging doesn't work either. But after scouring the documentation a little bit, there is this little green button, and it actually isn't green initially, that looks like a bug. You have to make sure that is clicked. Once I click that, debugging worked flawlessly for C++, and that was a big plus for me. All right, so in the dropdown that you see here, all the languages it supports are C, C++, CoffeeScript, Go, Java, Node.js, which is one that's really important to me, PHP with a built-in web server, PHP with a CLI, Python 2 and Python 3, which is also really big to me because I love doing like little machine learning projects where I bring in libraries that are external and I just test a few different things. Ruby, shell command, shell script, and TypeScript. You can also create new runners as well too, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So, I mean, they, they also mentioned that there are 80 different languages and variations of languages they support. Unfortunately, I find that a little bit hard to, to believe because these are the list of languages that, that are available today. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the documentation, but either way, that is a pretty good uh, support for language in my opinion. And overall, even though without Java having debugging capabilities, I still give the IDE a thumbs up because it, it does a lot. And really the debugging alone that is available for JavaScript and C++ is quite adequate. For a web-based web IDE, it is quite fantastic, actually. It's one of the best I've seen. All right, when looking at features that this IDE, Cloud9 IDE, supports that maybe a desktop application does not, the first thing that comes to mind is the collaboration feature. The collaboration feature allows multiple developers to jump into the same environment and work in different parts of the code. And it is absolutely fantastic. I will say setting up permissions and getting people invited in, a little bit painful in my opinion but maybe that's something you get better at with time. I also really like the idea of having my own server environment that I set up one time and that is there for me for no matter what computer I'm working at. And honestly, the performance was amazing. I was able to actually do some really awesome things that, and I get feedback instantly. It wasn't like, even with C++, it wasn't like a long compiling time or anything. It was actually quite, quite good. The third thing that I really like is how easily it integrates into Lambda functions, with, which are like serverless pieces of code that you can run in AWS. You can actually run them locally and, and really do some really cool development in Cloud9. And that's one thing I really appreciate. I've actually been using Lambda more and more over the last two years, and I don't see that going anywhere because setting up a Lambda function versus setting up an EC2 just is a huge cost savings. And not only that, it allows you to design your application in a way that's very modularized. So that's another thing that I really liked about it. Finally, I ran across that an image editor. So I had a JPEG file in here and I found out that I can actually cr crop, resize, and smooth out that image. Now I can't create an image from scratch. If you can, I haven't, didn't figure out how to do that. And I was like, that's actually pretty powerful to have, like right inside the web browser. So you don't have to jump out to your art program to resize your icon or resize your background image to fit the application you're working in. I thought that was a great ad and maybe that'll become more fleshed out in the future. All right, so moving into my fourth thing that I wanna talk about, and that is I wanted to put a Sales.js application on the box, see if I can preview it, see if I can actually lift it, and that's what it's called in sales, sales lift, and see if I can debug it. So I set out to do that. And initially, um, I, I noticed that I had to update the version of Node, so I installed NVM, updated to 8.12, because that's the LTE version. And I installed sales perfectly fine. I generated a new sales app, and I generated the boilerplate app where it has like login and authentication. Just because I wasn't planning on doing much coding here, I just wanted to have something to mess around with. And all of that worked flawlessly. Finally, I end up going to the built-in terminal and I run sales lift and it perfectly launches. I wanted to see if I could preview it, so I just literally hit the preview button and boom, it popped up in the right side over here. And 
I was amazed. Like, I'm like, that's really great. I can actually lift and I can actually preview right here. I even played around with trying to change some stuff and seeing if it would update in real time. It does not, but refreshing that page was very quick. The next thing that I did is tried to figure out debugging. And this is where I spent multiple hours actually trying to figure out how debugging a non, like debugging just a sales.js application. In theory, I should be able to just run the app.js file with the appropriate environment variable set and maybe the pro proper port, but I didn't even get a port error. And that just did not work. I kept getting errors that were unrelated to any of that stuff. So I'm a little bummed out. And I spent a good amount of time scouring the internet. And I'm wondering if it's specific to sales.js or if I'm doing something that I just don't know what the heck I'm doing. But ultimately, I do think you can debug a sales.js application. I just think it might require building a new configuration or maybe a new runner. Anyway, overall, I think this is a fantastic tool. And I am actually blown away by the features it has in an online uh, web-based web -based browser. And I would recommend you checking it out. If you're doing side projects and you want to set up an environment and maybe you've got three or four different computers to work between and you don't want to have to install all the like NPM packages and you don't want to have to re keep setting up your um, environment over and over again, I would recommend using Cloud9. And the, the launch time when your EC2 instance is off is like 20 seconds. It was not bad at all. I literally, you literally click open IDE and within 20 seconds you're back in. If your instance is open, you just launch right in there. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful to all you guys. If it has been, leave me a thumbs up. That would mean the world to me and subscribe. Until next time, everyone, keep coding.